What's going on guys and gals? Uh, Still Winston here, welcome to my channel. Uh, today we are continuing on with my Call of Juarez Gunslinger Let's Play. This is episode 6, The Dalton Brothers, They Call Me Bounty Hunter. Uh, this is actually a pretty fun mission. Um, just because of like the interactions between Silas and the bar, the bartend, the, the bar folk. He, um, it gets told through like multiple angles, and um, I realized something with Silas with how he looks. He bears a very strong resemblance to the man with no name from the Dollars trilogy, which just makes it even more awesome. All right, anyway, here we go. I'll just switch my face cam off. Thank you, darling. It's interesting how the truth can sometimes seem uh, might malleable, depending upon your point of view. Like how those dime novels make you out to be something you're not? Jack, don't be starting trouble. No, he's right. They do tend to exaggerate. Did they exaggerate your part in taking down the Daltons? Well, I was there in the flesh, boy, so I saw what happened firsthand. Those Daltons were lawmen once, before they all went bad, robbing banks and trains clear across the territory. Until Coffeeville, of course. I was one of the citizens who took up arms that day. Fighting on the side of the right? I did my best, sir. We all did. Yeah, Grey Wolf, though, that mission was weird. All right, here we go. It was early morning. One of my friends was a local gunsmith, and he handed out firearms to anybody who'd take one. You see, the Dalton's got it in their heads to rob two banks at the same time. Two banks on the same damn street. Yeah, well, more power to them. Great, right, anyway, um, take the rifle. Let's go. Story was Bob Dalton's girl was always writing about how he had no ambition. Oh, you're nobody next to Jesse James, she'd say. Finally, the bastard took his brothers to Coffeville just to shut her up. Right. It's always the woman's fault. Well, the locals recognized the Daltons right off. Before they could get away, half the town took up arms to defend their property. Brothers pay dearly for their stupidity, but everybody knows they had it coming. There's more to it than that. I read all about that day, so I know for a fact that it went down very differently. Well, that was a bit quick, yeah. First of all, it was high noon. A posse of U.S. Deputy Marshals were on the rooftop across the street. Get ready, boys. They're gonna make a move. The lawmen had been tracking the Daltons for months, now they finally had him dead to rights. Among them was a bounty hunter feared by many a lawbreaker. Ooh. This man had no intention of letting the Dalton slip away. They met an adversary that day who had no fear and offered them no quarter. It's you or me. Oh, yeah. The marshals tried to get the Daltons to surrender. They'll give up eventually. We just got to the bitches out. This bounty hunter knew that the brothers were far too proud to ever lay down their guns. You're a gunner. Ooh, that was a good shot. You went in there alone to confront those criminals. I did? Oh, yeah, I did. One of the marshals shouted, Where are you going? 
Are you crazy? Hey, where do you think you're going, dumbass? That rifle's mine. But he paid him no mind. He saw a way to get around to the back of the bank. Then he figured out how to hit the Daltons from a direction they weren't expecting. Up high, down low. From above. Fortunately, a water tower was right there. Yes, it was. A moment later, he was climbing up a steep ladder, laughing at danger as he did. It was brave men like him who risked their lives to tame this wild country. did what other men couldn't or wouldn't to make this country free. Is that Jim Silas Greaves? David Crawford, and the Alamo. Got you. These guns are fast, but they don't have a lot of stopping power. Oh, sh yeah. Over there. Yeah, I'm gonna grab the Rangers. That's Silas Green. What the hell? That's right, boys. Pray. Came away victorious, taking down those thieving Daltons. His name was Silas Greaves, and when the dust finally settled, he was the last man standing. Sorry, kid, but that just wasn't the way it happened. <laughs> Third time's the charm. It was early evening, not high noon. The Daltons blew up a safe, and were all set to hightail it out of there. Those pathetic deputies surrounding the bank were dropping like flies. Red shirts. I had been tracking those jokers for months, waiting for them to do something reckless. They look like enemies from Rayman 3. Uh, this one Finally, they did. Those stupid bastards decided to rob two banks at the same time in the same town where everybody knew them. But they still had friends in Coffeeville. You can't get me. Reload. Okay, let's go. I'm after you. Those friends came after me like a pack of wild dogs. Tooth and nail. They were coming at me from all directions. I caught sight of the Daltons running with the money and didn't want to lose it. Problem was, they knew the town better than I did. And to top it off, I found myself in the middle of another shootout entirely. Did the Daltons hold up in somebody's house? No, it was the uh, Smiths, I believe. They were cousins of the Daltons. And they were shooting at the Browns, who were shooting at the Daltons. Which wasn't any surprise, because those two families have been feuding forever. And since the Joneses are related to the Browns, they shot at the Smiths, pissing off the Heimhoffers, whose daughter recently married a Smith. Well, bullets were flying every which way as all the old feuds in Kansas caught fire all at once. There was a hell of a lot of pissed off people in Coffeeville that day. But that's just the way life is sometimes. Shit happens. Yeah. The Dalton boys knew I would never give up. Jesus! Those Daltons weren't the sharpest knives in the drawer, but they always stood together. 
They set a trap to slow oh, me down damn, I can jump at least two of them to escape. Damn it. Are we good? All right. Uh, I need to scramble up here. Oh no, I need to go over here. It was Emmett, the youngest, and he decided to stand his ground and face me down. I ain't afraid oh. of you. One sec, folks. Well, it looks like it's a showdown, boy. So burn it. He was determined to protect this his brothers. For you. I understood how he felt. Taking me on all by his lonesome wasn't exactly a recipe for a long <laughs> life. But Emmett Dalton survived the robbery in Coffeeville. He's the only Dalton who did. They say he was shot 23 times. Well, Dwight, who do you think put all those damn holes <laughs> in him? But I have to admit, that boy had grit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Emmett Dalton, um, in real life, he did survive getting shot over 20 times. Um, the fact that he survived with the medicine at the time being what it was, um, where you could actually die more from disease caused by the wounds rather than the actual wounds themselves is pretty, pretty uh, strange. I mean, so yeah, I believe he died in 1937. He went to prison uh, for about 10, for over 10 years and then he got pardoned. Uh, I believe he wrote a book about it or a autobiography or something. Um, Still, robbing two banks at the same time is pretty stupid, especially in a town where everybody knew who you were and you'd been there. But anyway, that was the West. Uh, live fast, don't think, shoot first, uh, die in your boots. Well, uh, thanks for watching, folks. I actually quite enjoyed that level. It was uh, it was pretty short, um, but just the way it was told was actually pretty funny. Um, so yeah, um, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Google+. I will have links down below for them. And well, so you can follow, you can send me an email directly at stillwinstonilvj at gmail.com. And well, uh, feel free to check out my websites. I should be getting some up, like more up as time goes on. Um, what else? I believe that's about it. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching guys. Uh, take care, I will see you on the next video. So until then, this is Still Winston saying thank you for watching. Goodbye.